I thought I would start off telling you a short story. The other day we had an event where families and kids could uh, come and play with us and our products. And as part of the event, we asked kids what color of balloon they wanted, which we then filled with air for them. So I was sitting there with a bunch of balloons basically on the floor and a young girl came up. And I asked her the same questions that I had asked all of the children. What color of balloon do you want? She looked at all of the balloons. Blue, green, red, yellow, pink. She picked up a yellow balloon. I was just about to start filling her balloon with air when I could hear a voice saying, Honey, honey, sorry, but don't you want a pink balloon? Pink is your favorite color. She looked up at her mom and then she looked at the balloons and she gave me a pink balloon instead. Now, a couple of minutes later, a young boy came up and I asked him the same question. What color balloon do you want? So he also looked at all of the colors. And then he picked up a yellow balloon and gave it to me. I was just about to start filling his balloon with air when I could hear another voice saying, But son, son, don't you want a green balloon or blue? I mean, blue is your favorite color. The boy looked confused at his dad and then he gave me a blue balloon. At Sokaboka, we design digital toys for kids. We released our first app in March 2011 and our 24th in May this year. We design apps for kids between the ages three to nine. More simply, you could say we design for kids to play. What does this really mean, right? Design for kids to play. Well, if we take a step back, we often use this more traditional model of looking at play, where play is defined in five different types of play. And kids, they play in all of these ways. Depending on their personality, they might prefer one to the other. So they are active play, which is playing with physical things outdoors, sports. Make-believe play, playing with Dolls, role play, scenes, manipulative play, puzzles, construction, where Lego is a very, very good example. And creative play, playing with music, coloring, drawing. And finally, we have learning, playing with books, games, skill. So what set thi sets this play pattern apart is that Playing with learning has a clear beginning, middle, and end. So if this is how kids play, again, to various degrees, depending on your personality, what does it look like on the product shelf? Or for us, what does it look like in the app store? Well, there's still very few apps that facilitate kids to play outside. There's a bit more, but still not many, that facilitates kids playing make-believe. A bigger group that facilitates make manipulative play where Minecraft, I think, today is a great example. And there's more apps than ever before that facilitates creative play. But the vast majority is still here. There's just a lot of games and books in the App Store today. So it feels a bit unbalanced, right? I mean, at least if you look at it from a kid's perspective and that they want to play in all of these ways. But it doesn't feel as unbalanced if we look at it how we play, adults. I personally read a lot of books and I play quite a lot of games. But when was the last time any of us played hide and seek? It's been a while. So when we, when we demo our products to adults, they're very, very enthusiastic at first. They're like, wow, this is Tokaboka, it's cool, I've heard about it, it's apps, I'm gonna play. And then they start and they're super enthusiastic, but then very often the enthusiasm just changes into a phase of confusion. And I get the question, hey Caroline, I'm sorry, but wh what should I do now? What's the next level? 
Well, now what you should do, you should play. You see, our apps have no rules or instructions. They're completely open-ended, but they require imagination. Kids ask a lot of questions, but I've never heard the same question from a kid. Hey, Caroline, what is the next level? Kids are different. They're not small adults. They're something else. So what we need to do when we design for kids is that we need to design something that they really want to play with. Not something that you and I think we would want to play with if we were kids. Because we're not anymore, right? I read books. I play games. So the question then really becomes, how do you keep a kid's perspective? This is tricky, and it's something we try to answer every day at Sokaboka. We start off by taking away certain aspects of apps which we think kids do not want to include unless it really enhances their play experience. Therefore, our apps have no text, so no instructions, no rules. We also have no language. No English, no Japanese, not even Swedish. And, and this is a hot topic, we have no in-app purchases. Because not only do we believe that this impacts the kids' play experience in a negative way, we also know that parents are very uneasy about the entire in-app purchase situation when it comes to younger kids. Finally, we have no external advertising. Because we believe that kids wouldn't want to include advertising in their toys unless it's something they can play with. So when we've taken all of these things away, we try to make products that every and any kind of kid can play with. So what we do is that we try to make products that are culturally unspecific, so that kids in China Brazil and the US plays with exactly the same toy. Then we try to make products that are sustainable over time. So what we look for is products and play pattern that kids want to come back to over and over and over again. We look for a large replay value. Then we focus on making quality products. We do not release 200 apps per year. We release a few apps every year, which we put all of our love and efforts to, to make them high quality products on the level we think kids deserve. And we try to make all our products unisex. We do not design for boys, we do not design for girls, we design for kids. So I'll show an example, because the same play pattern can look very, very different depending on who you design for. This is an app where you can play with hair. You can cut and style hair of very beautiful princesses in a pretty pink environment. If I had to guess, I would say this product is designed for girls. This is our version of the same play experience, the same play pattern. We can cut and style the hair of these characters. It's different, right? And I am very glad that our version of this play pattern has outsold the top version by quite a lot. So we've taken a lot of things away, and then we've sent these constraints, right? So what do we do then? What do we, like, what do we put inside the product? Well. We, this picture is, we have Chris here, the adult, one of our play designers, and then we have Annie and Abbe, the kids of one of our founders, and I don't know if you can see this, because it's like the first Instagram picture ever in Sweden or something, it's a long time ago, but uh, they're playing with uh, physical toys. So this is where we start. We start playing with kids in a physical environment and looking at play patterns and how they play. Then we conceptualize that and we put it into an app. So we then have this app and it could be great, but what we know is that what our group of adults, even with the best intentions, we don't really know what kids want. 
So we play test. We play test and we play test and we play test. We go quite crazy with our playtesting, to be honest. Uh, but what's important is to then really honor the playtesting. So I'll show an example as well of how we did in Toka Town. So Toka Town is our latest product. We released it in May this year. And in Toka Town, I don't know if you played it, but you can do a lot of things. You can go to the store, you can go to a restaurant, you can go to the police station, you can put people to jail, you can walk your dog. There's just there's a lot of things you can do in Toka Town. But when we did our play testing and we asked kids what they really wanted to do, there was one thing missing. They wanted to be able to flush the toilet, right? It's a, it's a fun thing. And not only do they want to be able to flush the toilet, they want to be able to flush anything into the toilet. Because you can't do that in real life. So today, you can flush almost anything into the toilet. And kids love this. So this is the version that we released in May, but we continue to listen to kids once we have released our products. So, and Talk Town wasn't enough. We got like emails and lists and comments about we want to be able to do this and this and this, but there were two things that stood out that kids really wanted. One of them was that they were wanted to be able to refill cups of coffee and cups of juice and lemonade and water because the you know, once you drank it, it was out and you couldn't refill and then the play, it stopped. Stupid. Uh, so this morning we released an update where you can refill the coffee cups, the glasses and the water bottles. And you can also put accessories on the dog, which was very important. So it sounds good, right? We designed for kids, we hang out with kids, it's all just wonderful. But what does it really work? So far, our products have been downloaded 75 million times in 160 countries, which I think is a great indicator that our efforts to try to be culturally unspecific and to have kids all over the world play with exactly the same products has been quite successful. And in December last year, which is the highest monetizing month of the year in our category, this is what the global paid ranking looked like. So why was it so important for me to ask kids, what color of balloon do you want? Well, at Toka Boca, we believe it's important to see the kids' perspective and for kids to be free. Free to make their own choices and to play however they want. I think if I'd asked a group of grown-ups the same question, what color of balloon do you want? No one would tell someone else, you should pick that color because that's your favorite color. You, you don't do that, right? Not to adults. By letting kids make their own choices, we set kids free. And this is what pure play is all about and why it is so important. When kids play, in an open-ended way, we empower them to make their own decisions and to find their own path in life. And this, I believe, is something that we should all, when we develop things for kids, be fighting for. That is it. Thank you. Questions? microphone even. Um, when you're designing something like Toka Town, uh, you have to make very hard decisions, I imagine, about what to include and not include. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you want to give enough so that a kid can choose between different color balloons or different objects or different activities, but also you don't want to turn it into ADD theater. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just curious, can you talk a little bit about the process and how you guys approach that decision making and make those decisions? It's a, a very iterative process. So we start off with, um, as I showed on the picture, we have a play designer. Our teams are very small. So our play designers are the ones that carry the vision throughout our project. So they come and they say, we want to play in a town. And we w the play pattern is almost like in a small house, you know, in 
what, what kids set up almost everywhere we put them, they start like, even with teddy bears, like, here am I, I live here and I go here and I do this and so forth. We want to facilitate that in a, in a digital setting. They, of course, describe it much more <laughs> colorful than I just did. Uh, and then we invite kids and we buy physical toys and we facilitate the same play pattern. And we try to see what kids, what is it in this play pattern that kids really like. And then we try to put our focus on that. Because it could, this play pattern could be a very flat experience if you would only focus on having like a nice picture up front. So you, the pillow fighting that you can do in Tokyo Town is another thing we added on because kids really want it. So it's going back and forth all the time between kids and the play designer, but also between our artists, what it should look like, and between our technical team, which just there's a lot of things that kids want to do that we aren't able to execute on. We had a couple of a few years ago, we had a really cool idea about the baking app, but we couldn't get the feeling of baking really good. So we had to scrap that idea because that kids really like to bake. And if you can't get it like technically baking really well, then it's not fun. Okay. Um, quick question. What is the best selling title of Tokoboga from day one? I mean, you're biggest hit and what's the average time for you from re from getting an idea until the product fi is finished what's the development time phase if i missed that I'm yeah it's a it's a it's a good <laughs> it's a good sm short question the best selling product is uh, Toka hair salon 2 uh, and the average time for when we develop an app varies a lot <laughs> <laughs> it is anything between Five to nine months, I'd say. Thank you. <coughs> Hi there. You mentioned all the different types of play, and one of the biggest trends in the industry right now for kids is taking the analog toy product and trying to either scan or transfer it into a digital product. I'd be interested to hear your perspective if you think that broadens the types of play or if you think that that is a successful type of play with kids. I haven't seen any product yet, which is s the way I look at it is I think it would be a great way to play, probably, but it needs to enhance play. It needs to come from a the perspective of would kids, would this make the play experience better or not? Because just adding a physical product to a, uh, the iPad or iPhone experience, that doesn't, kids don't look at it from that perspective. They look at it from a, can I play with this? And it, it, does that enhance the play experience? There's a risk if we just put plastic with the iPad that kids will take just the plastic aside and then, then it's not good for the developers of that toy either. So as long as you keep at it from a very like strict kids perspective and you test it with kids and they like it and they enjoy it, I'm sure there's possibilities to do great products. Okay, last question. Um, I was wondering uh, if you know uh, and see variances in the average play sessions depending on the age group uh, for your products and um, uh, if, you, if you can even average the play session for the for the children and doesn't mean it affect the way you like to design them. I'd say some of our products uh, skews to younger kids and some to a broader age group. It's also we we test in on average four to three to nine, but and Toka Town is a good example where a three year old can have a really good time and a nine year old can have a really good time. The play session, we always try to make the play session as long as possible for the age group that we develop for. So Pet Doctor that we uh, released earlier this year have is for a younger age group, but have as long play session as kids would have in an older age group with an older product, if that makes any sense. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Uh, the PlayStation time there varies a lot between 
almost coming back to the five different types of play. Kids are also different between them, uh, themselves. So some kids really enjoy one set of products, which they will go back to and play and play and play again, because that's, you know, that's their play pattern. Uh, and other kids, they like other products a lot. So it varies a lot depending on what sort of kid you are and what your personal preferences are. Okay, great. Um, Caroline will uh, be hanging out for a bit if you'd like to talk to her afterwards. So thank you again, Caroline, for your excellent observations.